Hi everyone, this is AJ. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Season 4, Episode 2 of Star Trek Discovery. Give my thoughts on this episode. So let's talk about it. Okay, so Episode 2 of this latest season of Star Trek Discovery is literally just aired so obviously i watched it and um yeah so this episode's called anomaly now if you recall in the last episode there was this this anomaly that destroyed a planet and and threatened this 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 space station and the discovery had to go in and, and um help save the people on board um in this episode we come to learn that what it looks like is that the anomaly is the coming together of two black holes um, and, and in order to get more data the, the discovery itself has to travel out to the anomaly and, and get closer to it to, to record whatever it can to learn what, what exactly is happening and what's causing these subatomic waves that are destroying things and this sort of a thing. So obviously they jump to their destination when they get there they can't get close enough to warrant um, uh, getting the information they need so they realize they have to get even closer to the anomaly via getting inside the dust cloud that, that's sort of separating it from normal space um, so after a lot of hoo ha they decide that, that Booker will go in his ship, that sort of transformed shape, um, and he'll take the Doctor with him. But it's not the Doctor, it's, it's a holographic version of the Doctor. The Doctor's linked to a hologram thing on the ship, blah, 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 and yeah, do you know what I mean? So they have to go inside, tethered to the Discovery. Um, that doesn't work, they become untethered, um, and obviously they're at risk of... of of being destroyed in there. They gotta stay in as long as they can to, to recover as much data as they can and this sort of thing. And that's pretty much what the episode's about. Um, there is other stuff going on in the episode, obviously. Um, Saru rejoins the vessel. Um, Saru comes back because Starfleet, he, he knows that Starfleet needs him at this time because there's this, this massive event occurring. Um, they have offered him a, a vessel of his own to captain, but he says that he'd rather go on board Discovery and act as a number one to Michael Burnham's captain um, and, and sort of be the voice of reason, that voice in her ear that, that, that helps direct her in the right direction, this sort of thing. So it's fantastic to have Saru back on the ship because he's a fantastic character, played by a fantastic actor and he always shines in every scene he's in, you know, he's really good. Um, you got a little bit of stuff going on between that with that with that young character, the sort of transsexual one, that's got that other character in its mind. Um, I don't know this character's name. Sorry, uh, you know, that, yeah. Um, there's stuff going on about them them creating a, an android body to to get this consciousness into. Um, there is a mention of Picard, and um, from this we learn that. Picard was the only one that's ever been done with. Like, if you watched the Picard series, you know that by the end of that, Picard's consciousness was transferred into like an android version of himself that will age and this sort of a thing. Um, yeah, we learned they never uh, ever really managed to utilize that technology again, um, but they're trying it here um, 800 years later to try and, and, and give a body to this consciousness. Um, so that's something that will be running throughout the season. Um, obviously there's there's stuff between Booker and the Doctor when they're on board, they get a chance to have a bit of a, to grow their relationship because their relationship has been um, sort of, it hasn't really developed or anything like this. But yeah, so that's pretty much what the episode uh, um, uh, uh, deals with. Um, I don't want to go in depth into into the story elements or anything like this because it'll just ruin the episode for you if you plan on watching it. Now, they do get the data at the end from the from 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 the the anomaly, only to learn that while they've been there, the anomaly has shifted direction, and there's no reason for it to have done that. Almost like it's a, a, a living entity, maybe. Um, time will tell. The camera does pan back at the very end of the episode to show the sort of anomaly and it almost looks like an eye. So I'm wondering if it's sort of 
going in the direction of this this anomaly being some sort of a, a, a huge living entity of its own um, and this sort of thing but but we'll see um, so as episodes go yes it was very enjoyable um, last episode and this episode has been a, a great start to this season um, I would say it's a stronger start than the previous season in season three um, because that was with all the setup of them jumping forward in time and this sort of thing but in this now they're in the future and they can do Star trek -y stuff as it should be. So, um, I suppose my second favourite start to a season after season two. Um, so it's looking good for the series in this sense that this could become um, the best or maybe the second best season of the series thus far. Um, there's a lot of great character moments. Again, they, they, they're delving into the smaller characters that, that are on the bridge, that form the bridge crew giving them little bits and tidbits to do so that you, you warm to them and get to know the characters and this is something that was lacking from the very first season of of and into the second season of Star Trek Discovery that you never really got a, a feel for these characters I mean I still don't know half of their names to be honest with you um, not that that bothers me part of that's just because I'm older now and I don't follow these things as in depth as what I used to when I was younger I can still name you all the, all the characters from TNG Voyager, um, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, all that sort of thing. But now, going into these, I, don't, I mean, does anyone else suffer with these problems? I don't know. It may just be me. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I was watching the episode and I was thinking, you know, I know that people have issue with Star Trek and the way that it's portrayed now, but, um, and they, they've got this longing for the Star Trek that once was the sort of, um, TNG era and that which was fantastic but you think we had maybe nearly 700 episodes of Star Trek with that sort of look and feel to it it was inevitable they had to update the series to some degree um, and, and thusly they've done that with this series in in the look and feel of it it's nice to see it coming back into its own in, in the sense of trying to recapture the crew and, and, and the storytelling in that sort of a sense but with this aesthetic that, that differs from what we've had before. The new uniforms look fantastic, um, you know it's the best that we've seen in Discovery thus far in my opinion. Um, so yeah very good start to the season, really enjoyed it um, and that's it. Now I'm feeling really rough, I've been ill for the past week and so yeah, although I thought I'd watch this, I'll come and review it, um, and why not? But anyway, this is AJ, if, if you enjoyed that, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I will do this as a weekly thing, I will watch it weekly as it's on, and and, and um, do a review for the episodes and whatnot, and, and keep you up to date. Anyway, this is AJ, thanks for watching, um, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. I'm off to bed. Take care all, goodbye.